Hi, Kyle Barton here with BB Custom Tools, and I want to introduce you to the newest version of our seat drilling guide. This drilling guide allows you to easily, accurately, and repeatably drill mortises for legs, spindles, arm posts, back posts, etc., into your seat blank. And it does this without the use of mirrors, sliding bevel gauges, the force, uh, <laughs> extreme hand-eye coordination, you know, things that you get with years of experience in drilling this. So anyone with modest woodworking skills can drill their leg mortises, spindles, um, arm posts, back posts, whatever it may be, they can drill them like a pro using this drilling guide. Now, one of the things this drilling guide also allows you to do is actually ream holes. So you can ream your leg uh, mortises. So you can drill them and ream them all in one step. Using a reamer uh, made by uh, my buddy, Sean Murphy. Uh, there'll be a link to his website and you, and you can buy uh, one of his reamers. He sells them in 11 degrees and the more popular six degree uh, all metal reamers. And, um, just taking your time, I'll have a demo at the end of this video uh, showing you just how easy it is to both drill and ream using this jig. And in about four minutes, you can have a leg hole drilled and reamed. So four legs, you're probably looking at taking your time 20 minutes. You got all your leg holes drilled, you got them all reamed, but most importantly, they're all accurate and they're all easily done. So let's go into a little bit about the design of this particular jig. So it um, comes in three parts. So the drilling guide um, has uh, this tower and runner unit, which is made out of these aluminum profile extrusions. And then it has um, this angle gauge, and this is what you use to uh, get the hole that you're going to drill at the correct angle and in the proper orientation. Then of course it has this shaft here. This is a 10 inch shaft with this half inch coupler and this half inch coupler then attaches to your chair making bit. Uh, these are special custom ground bits. It's not included with the jig, but you can buy these separately. We have them in a variety of different sizes and different types of grind. This is the uh, traditional trident uh, design that allows you to um, basically drill at very acute angles. So perfect for drilling all the um, angles in a uh, seat blank. And this bearing allows this to have about 30 degrees of motion in this direction and 30 degrees of motion in that direction. If you followed along, like I said, we have a wooden version of this jig and um, all the dimensions of this jig are exactly the same as the wooden version. So any of the past videos you might find on YouTube or IGTV that show me demonstrating different aspects of the wooden jig exactly the same for this. The, <clears throat> all the specifications are exactly the same. Height, width, uh, cross section, everything is exactly the same as the wooden jig. So nothing changes there. So uh, the tower here is uh, basically a two inch by two inch tower and it's attached to these runners. It's attached by these gusseted brackets. Uh, these brackets have four screws going into the runner, four going into the um, into the tower unit here and the same on this side. So a total of 16 connection points, which makes this extremely rigid and extremely secure. Now the runners are two inches apart, just like the wooden version. So everything that you're gonna be drilling is gonna be one inch on center. That's where this angle gauge comes into. Um, it is actually one inch wide where it uh, meets up with the runner so that you line up your sight line here and the angle that you want to drill here and you're golden. So um, the other aspect about this, uh, about this jig is the way the orientation is on these runners. So the way the tower is situated in, at this particular dimension allows you to find a clamping solution because this jig, once you get in the correct orientation, you want to clamp it so it doesn't move on you. Um, you, you ideally want to have two clamping points uh, one on this runner, one on that runner. 
uh, just to make sure that everything is nice and uh, secure and it's not going to move on you. Um, uh, and that is the reason for this uh, orientation, why the runner is not centered. It's actually a little bit back because I found that, uh, you know, when you're doing um, you're drilling mortises on the edge of a seat, uh, particularly like you're looking at for like arm posts or uh, back posts, you're really on the edge of your seat blank. And this will allow you to find a clamping solution where you can get a clamp either back here and here or vice versa or here or back or two clamps back here just so that you can get this uh, securely clamped in. So that's very important as far as the orientation of that. Okay, so that basically covers the design here. So we do have the threaded rod that pierces the tower at a perfect height. This height here corresponds to the angle uh, of this uh, angle gauge here. So everything is perfectly in alignment and um, calibrated. In fact, each of these um, angle gauges is calibrated individually to each of the seat drilling guides. Um, I make it sound complicated. It's actually pretty easy. I'm going to have a video out on how to calibrate this because there are other uses for this jig where you might want to move uh, the orientation of this rod and bearing. You might want to push it out or you might want to flip it from this end to this end. So um, I will have a video out how to recalibrate this to get everything in spec. Um, there is a video where I actually use this in a horizontal orientation like this where it's clamped to a bench and you're drilling this way. And um, I'm actually drilling into a crest rail to drill the spindle holes in that crest rail. And that works extremely, extremely well. And it's easy to do. And um, like I said, there's a video out there. It's actually using the wooden version. But like I said, the specs for this are exactly the same. So anything that the wooden version does, this one does as well. Um, the only basic consumable part on this jig is going to be the parking lot for the drill bed, as I call it. Um, that's just a place that when you're moving this jig around on your seat blank, when you're, you know, uh, uh, setting your angles for the next hole and all that, you want some place to rest the drill bed and you put it in this. Um, I could see this over time uh, wanting to be replaced and I will actually ship this with an extra one. And um, if you manage somehow to go through two of them, just let me know. And if you pay for postage, which this should just fit in a standard envelope, uh, I will ship you a new one free of charge. So with that said, let's see the seat drilling guide in action. All right, we're going to be drilling a mortise into the seat blank. Here I am uh, lining up the uh, angle gauge with the mark in the hole and the sight line. Have that done and I got the uh, jig clamped into place. So here we go. We're drilling the leg mortise and uh, it goes in nice and smoothly and easily it's just that simple to drill these holes so that's all drilled out now we're actually going to go ahead and ream this leg hole and the easiest way to do that is to switch out right here i'll be taking the uh, drill bit out of the coupler already have the reamer there in the leg hole that's the easiest way to make this transition from one from the bit over to the reamer and we got that tightened up and ready to ream. Look closely and um, you should be able to see a dark red mark on the side of the reamer and that's the distance that we want to go with the reamer and that will give it a, get us to a leg mortise diameter of 15 16 of an inch. There you can see that mark a little better. Now I'm going to use um, one of my uh, stretcher drilling guide bases to uh, verify that we're at the mark and we are and that's just how easy it is now i'm going to show you how accurate that was we have a dummy leg here i'll get my sliding bevel and uh, move that up against the leg along the sight line make sure everything's lined up good all right and tighten that up now we're shooting for 16 and a half degrees uh, with this particular leg mortise so We'll get our angle gauge out here and there's 15 16 and a half so we move that and we go to 16 16 and a half right on the button so that's just how easy it is to both drill and ream a hole now we're moving on to doing a 
stopped mortis for a spindle. So we're sitting there with the angle gauge in the jig and lining that up. I believe this one is at eight and a half degrees. So we line that up and once we get that lined up, then we're going to go ahead and clamp the jig down. Here I'm using the micro jig um, clamps. They work extremely well. And I actually got a piece of, um, I think it's nylon hose or something like that, or vinyl hose, should I say. And on the end of that, just to prevent marring. And uh, it works really well to uh, clamp this uh, drilling guide down. So we verify that nothing moves while we're doing the clamping, and we take the angle gauge out. And then we're going to go ahead and put the drill on and uh, we got a stop collar on the half inch bit so we can stop that mortise at just a little over an inch deep. And uh, those stop collars actually sold by my uh, buddy Sean Murphy at SeanMurphyWindsorChairs.com if you're interested in them. He has them for all different sizes of bits and they're really great. So there we go. So that's just how easy it was to do that. Now here we are, we're going to go ahead and see how we did. So we put in a dummy spindle, half inch spindle, and go ahead and tighten that bevel gauge. Like I said, uh, we're going for eight and a half. Uh, so right there is at eight and a half degrees on the bevel gauge. And we take our sliding bevel and there we are right at eight and a half degrees.